Let us pray. God of light and truth, grant us peace as we gather tonight. May we draw closer to you as we recall again the service and suffering of Christ, in whose name we meet and pray. Amen. Amen.
Help us to know your spirit with us, your gracious forgiveness, and your strength in our hearts. That we
now the action of cleansing. Now he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was betray him. And for this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. Feet are not everyone's cup of tea. To take water and wash the feet of the old, the sick, the poor, to take that intimate step of closeness, and to do so in a matter-of-fact way, is a marked act of service. And to have one's own feet washed can be accompanied by a painful sense of lost independence as another does for you what you cannot do for yourself. Again and again, we come clean through water and through forgiveness. But again and again, the cleansing grace of God finds its challenge through our words and actions, our lack of words and lack of action. And then once again, we need that cleansing grace. Christ comes and kneels and cleanses us that we might be whole. Unless I wash you, you have no part of me, Jesus says to Peter. And Jesus says that to you and me as well. Let us pray. Lord God, help us to accept love when it is shown, and your love as it is shown through Christ. Lord, Hear us, Lord, Lord cleanse us through your grace. Servant. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet, for I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are the messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. To sort out a scene plan for a wedding can be a nightmare. Who might be offended by not being included at the top table? Who should be seated near that table? Who wouldn't mind sitting with the children? Our egos can be massaged by the importance placed upon us. Jesus lowered himself to the floor spoke about servants and messengers being no greater than the master. And yet the one whom we serve came to serve. Do you know what I have done for you, Jesus asks? Well, do we? If you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them, says Jesus. 
This night we recall the blessedness of following Christ. The blessedness not of a throne or a palace, not of a promise of ease, not a satin cloak, but a towel and a basin and a crown of thorns and a cross. A way of blessed service here and now and the promise of peace to come. Let us pray. Gracious God, teach us how to serve as we are served. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord fill us, us with your humble love. of betraying. I am not speaking to all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but it is to fulfill the scripture. The one who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I tell you this now before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe that I am he. Very truly, I tell you, whoever receives one whom I send, receives me. And whoever receives me, receives him who sent me. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of the disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining close to his heart. Simon Peter therefore mentioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread and that I have dipped into the dish. And when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered him. Jesus said to him, Do quickly what you are going to do. Now no one knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him, Buy what you need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. Let us pray. Loving God, we pray for those who are persecuted and betrayed for their faith. Lord, hear us. Lord, fill us with your strength. fifth action is leaving. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, 
Where I am going, you cannot come. Let us pray. Jesus told his disciples that he was going to prepare a place for them. In silence, we remember those who have gone before us, who have brought the gospel to us, who have served Christ amongst us, and who now are in that place prepared also for us. Lord, hear us. Lord, fill us with your glory. The action of loving. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Let us pray. Jesus commanded his disciples to love even as he knew that betrayal and denial were close at hand. We pray for those who are rejected and unloved. We pray for those who are betrayed by those whom they love. We pray for those who deny their faith through fear. Pray for those who this night and every night fear for their lives. We pray for those for whom this night will be their last. Lord, hear us. Lord, fill us with your compassion. denying. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, will you lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. There was only one other person waiting as he arrived. The owner was speaking to the man in the chair as he cut his hair. There were strangers in the street, he said. There was a different accent to their voice, a different manner to their dress. It was like being in a foreign land. 
The waiting customer nodded with a smile and said nothing. She was with her friends and the joke she retold was one heard earlier in the day. It was mild in comparison to some, but not so to those who knew the pain of disability or the rejection of difference. The girls laughed, and her closest friend smiled quietly, but said nothing. He was on his way home after an early appointment, and the driver laughed as he passed the congregation leaving the synagogue. Look at them, he said. His passenger, visible in the mirror, turned away to look out of the side window but said nothing. Let us pray. O oh God, you know that it is often easier and safer for us to remain silent when we might challenge, to speak with quiet voices when they need to be louder, Help us, we pray. Recall us to your service as Christ recalled your servant Peter by the lakeside, that we may be fed and then feed others. Lord, hear us. Lord, fill us with your courage, your love, and your humility.
the meal that Jesus had in the upper room. It was a scene that would have looked something like this. Now you may not be able to see this up close right now, but I hope you will take some time as you exit the sanctuary this evening. This is a, a gift from Diane and Walter Snower from their recent trip to Israel and Palestine, carved out of olive wood, I believe, and it is a scene of friends gathered together in a, in a room, in an informal setting on the floor as they would have. Take some time to look closely at this image as we remember again this night. Would you stand for the invitation to Holy Communion? May you know that the Lord is with you. And also with you. May you open your heart to Christ this night. And may you know God's love within you. Even in the foreboding presence of darkness. And may Christ's light shine forth. In the beginning, before betrayal and denial, O oh God, creator of all that is seen and not seen, you bless us with the gift of this universe and this world in which we live. A place of beauty and challenge. A place of endless sky and minute form. A place of similarity and difference. Present from the beginning was the word bringing forth your grace through the waters of sea and sky, river and stream, and through all living things. You formed us in your image, but rather than praising your name for all that was and is, again and again, we turned away from you, often preferring our own gods and our own ways. In patience and love, you gave to us those who called us back to your paths, but we chose different roads. In a moment of time, you gave the word present before time to become flesh and make his home amongst us. He taught of wholeness and celebration. He healed those who came to him. He sought those who had wandered from your way, but still your grace-filled word was denied. On this night, we recall that after supper, Jesus Christ, the word of love and goodness amongst us, was arrested and tried, and that on the day that followed, he was crucified. In remembrance of all that has been done for us, through the word of creation, and the word of prophecy, and the word of all giving grace, we join with voices around us and beyond us in the song of everlasting praise. did so knowing that their story wasn't finished yet. 
It was a simple act of eating and drinking together, but it was powerful. And all at once, the disciples' expectation for their lives and what's possible this side of heaven began to shift and expand. And so we tell the story again. On this night, as Jesus was about to be handed over to death, he sat down and he took the bread, gave thanks and broke it, saying, this represents my body, given for you every time you eat like this. Do so in remembrance of me. Then in like manner, Jesus took the cup and blessed it, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many. Whenever you break bread and share this cup, do so remembering me and remembering me this. And keep on doing this until the world is finally as it should be in the fullness of God's glory and grace will be known to all. Here in this moment of time and in this place, Christ is present with us in this bread and wine. Therefore, O oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ for us and pour out your Holy Spirit upon us all, wherever we may be, that we may be his body in this world. Amen. Amen. And join me in the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples and that we say now together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of our Lord, now and forever. Amen. You are invited when you receive the bread to take and eat it as soon as you receive it, symbolizing your personal relationship that you have or that you're desiring to have with Christ. And then we will all hold the cup to take it together to symbolize the communal relationship that we have with Christ as a gathered community of believers and seekers. You may be seated. This cup, the fruit of the vine, the drink that was shared at the table with Jesus' friends on that last night. It is this cup that has become for us a symbol of Jesus' love poured out for you and for me. And so take and drink and give thanks. I invite you to stand as we pray together. We give you thanks and praise, O oh God, that even in the darkness of this night, your light shines. We rejoice that you have joined with Christ at this table.
sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. There is no final blessing tonight. As the events continue into tomorrow and then on to Easter morning resurrection, the candles remain lit as a sign of hope as we depart softly into the night.